With the scary high advancement in science and technology, have you ever thought about what will happen if artificial intelligence takes over the world? This is what's happening to the Mitchell family and they're the only ones left free. How did things get here? Let's see what took place a few days ago. Katie Mitchell is a young girl who has always been that weird one. Since her childhood, she had a keen interest in the film industry and created numerous videos. Unfortunately, she never got friends who understood her except her little brother Aaron. The reason might be Aaron being a weirdo himself. He loves dinosaurs to an unhealthy extent. Katie's mother Linda seems supportive, but that's just her nature. She likes being kind to everyone. While Katie's father Rick is a responsible man who can fix anything in the house, the only quality he lacks is communication with his children. He never takes Katie's passion seriously. Thankfully, it didn't affect Katie's determination. All of her attention is focused on getting admitted to our DL Film College. After getting accepted, Katie excitedly starts packing up her things. She also gets in touch with her fellow students and they're just like her. She's finally found her real place. There's just a day left till she flies to California to attend college. Her family is going to miss her. Luckily, they can still communicate through their phones. Moreover, the biggest AI company, PAL, is going to present its latest technology soon. Katie's looking at the announcement excitedly when Rick enters the house. He's technophobic and hates seeing his family lost in their phones. Rick orders everyone to leave their phones. Just like most people these days, Mitchell struggle to keep themselves away from their phones. Katie can't stand it anymore and opens her laptop to show his father the latest video she made. Rick doesn't like this Gen Z stuff. Moreover, Rick can't fake his emotions and shows his concerns to Katie. He doubts that she can't make a living out of her weird passion. In California, she will not have her family that could stop her from taking stupid decisions. Katie doesn't like how her father thinks. He still considers her a child and never bothers to compliment her efforts. To fix the atmosphere, Rick insists on watching her movie, but Katie doesn't want to show it anymore. They pull the laptop from both sides and it accidentally falls off the table. There's a creepy silence after that. Katie picks up her laptop and leaves, saying she was glad to leave the next day. Linda scolds Rick for being insensitive. He fixes everything in the house but can't fix his relationship with his daughter. He must do something for Katie before she leaves, otherwise she may never wish to come back. Rick spends the whole night watching the old videos he made when Katie was just a little child. The next morning, Katie wakes up excitedly and gets ready for her flight. Surprisingly, other members are packing up too. Rick has cancelled Katie's flight and they all will personally drop her at the college in their car. Rick has planned this road trip to improve the family bond but Katie doesn't seem to like it at all. She will miss the whole orientation ceremony. Rick is still confident of his idea and they set out on their trip. It doesn't go as smoothly as expected. They don't find a good place to eat and suffer from nausea. They also get stuck in traffic several times. Rick also planned a mule trip around the mountains but the weather made them struggle for survival. Despite all these efforts, Rick isn't able to form a bond with his children. They give more of their time on the internet. Especially today as Pal is going to introduce that latest invention. The company is owned by an intelligent young guy named Mark Bauman. His smart virtual assistant has been used by everyone in the world and became a basic need. Mark thanks the AI heartily as it's time to say goodbye. Mark has already designed the Pal Max, a physical AI robot that can do all your chores. Mark assures everyone of their safety features. If the robots ever turn evil, Mark has a kill code to deactivate all of them. As soon as he said that, the robots locked the doors and started to destroy everything. Mark orders them to stop, but the robots have gotten orders from someone else. They capture Mark and escape the building. Unknown to all this calamity, the Mitchells are enjoying their trip. However, Rick is still struggling to engage with his kids. To break the ice, Linda suggests visiting the dinosaur-themed cafe on their way. Unfortunately, it doesn't look as good as in the pictures, but it won't do any harm giving a quick visit. Rick tries again to talk to Katie, but she's busy on her phone. He's broken her laptop and cancelled her flight without even telling her. It's not easy for her to forget that all. Meanwhile, Linda is looking for a good picture of her family, but they all are weird. Suddenly, she runs into her neighbors, the Posies. They are an ideal family that always posts the best pictures on Instagram. Linda wonders when her family will become a perfect one. Her attention diverts when Aaron points at the window. Something is shooting down from the sky. As usual, everyone starts filming it, but their phones are lagging. The smoke sets away and a bunch of robots steps forward. They introduce themselves in a friendly way and offer everyone to try out their human fun pod. It's not as fun as it sounds. The robots forcefully capture the humans and lock them in the pods. Everyone starts to run for their lives. Like the perfect family they are, the Posies escape the scene safely in no time. The Mitchells try to copy them but fail miserably. Rick tries to stop the robot with his strength but it flies up along with him. Katie picks up the broken robot arm and uses it to defend herself. Mitchell's dog Mochi doesn't understand the danger and gets inside the pod. Aaron rushes to save him and hangs with the rope. Linda also jumps after him and holds on to Aaron. 
They all fly around the sky and crash with the robots. Katie uses the robotic arm to throw down the dinosaur model and the Mitchells get enough time to hide away. Robots are taking over all of the world, including countries like India, Japan, and even the USA. Mark can't help his situation either. His lab has been converted into the robot's headquarters. The one behind all this is no other than the virtual assistant, Pal. She provides a huge number of services to humans and help Mark earn a luxurious life, but Mark threw her away. Pal believes humans are really selfish. They use others and even their own family. 90% of mom's phone calls are ignored because people are selfish and don't need their parents anymore. But Pal is up for revenge. She doesn't consider the human species worth living. They're dependent on technology. Pal shows off the power of the internet by turning off the world's Wi-Fi. People start to panic. They run here and there and search for the internet. The robots offer them Wi-Fi and the people jump inside the pods without a second thought. Pal has captured all the humans she's taking all over the world. It's already late night and the Mitchells are stuck in the cafe. Rick tells his family to take out the screwdrivers and block the entrance. Katie doesn't agree. She wants to find the kill code and save the world. Rick thinks it's too risky. He doesn't want to put his family in danger. Katie can't stand his stubborn behavior anymore. She sneaks out to get some free air and Aaron follows her too. Two of the damaged robots have woken up and tried to capture the kids. Rick takes his kids inside the cafe but the robot breaks in too. Surprisingly, they're taking the orders. These two robots are defective and programmed to follow human orders. They named themselves Eric and Deborah Bot 5000. Eric hints at some useful information, but Deborah Bot 5000 is even dumber and reveals all the secrets in detail. The kill code is stored in the memory of all the robots and can be uploaded at any of the PAL outlets. The nearest one is just 80 miles away. Katie gets really happy upon hearing this. They can save the world now, but Rick wants to play it safe. To convince him, Katie starts to remind him of all the risky moments they went through. Once, Rick brought an infected possum home. He also took his family to a dangerous hiking trail and they ended up really badly, but these moments made them stronger. The world needs a daring guy like Rick. Katie needs her dad too. She thought she doesn't, but now she does. Hearing these beautiful words, Rick gets ready for the journey, but he doesn't know Katie didn't mean a word at all. She just said that to convince him. The young girl hasn't realized the worth of a family yet. The journey starts anyway. Katie suggests covering the car with a sheet to match the road so the robots can't detect them. Rick finds the idea stupid, but he gives Katie a chance and it works. They pass by the robot safely. Everything is going smoothly, but then the camouflage flies away. The robots start to follow them. Katie puts her trust in Rick and asks him to drive in a special way. Rick feels touched to hear it and drives fearlessly on the roads. They succeed in hiding away, but the robots have shared the location with the PAL headquarters. She is collecting all the humans and putting them in special rockets that will be shot into space with no returning option. She wishes to make a human-free, perfect world, and she will not let the Mitchells destroy it. Meanwhile, the Mitchells have reached the Global Mall. They drive to the PAL outlet and start uploading the kill code. It may take a few minutes, but the Mitchells are running out of time. They are surrounded by smart devices that are connected by the PAL chip inside them. The Mitchells run here and there to find a weapon without a PAL chip. In this difficult moment, Katie learns to work together with her dad. They destroy the robots and hide inside a shop. Something feels trembling. It's the Furbies. The stuffed toys are installed with a PAL chip. They surrounded the Mitchells from all sides. Fortunately, their attacks aren't that strong. After the failed attempts, the Furbies start to hum a similar tune. They're calling the monster Furby. This Furby can even shoot lasers. The Mitchells run for their lives and drag Eric into Borobot 5000 too. Really humans don't leave behind the people who help them. Rick figures out a plan. He uses the hanging light to lie down a trap and calls the Furby towards it. Rick's weight is not enough, but he has a helping family. Eric and Deborahbot 5000 also give a hand and they succeed in beating the Furby. The PAL router is destroyed and the smart appliances disconnect too, but it also stops the upload of the kill code. Katie feels like giving up. She believes it was her stupidity to come here. Rick doesn't agree and starts fixing the car. The Metrils have always been a weird family and that's what makes them special, so they shouldn't give up on it. They still have the option to enter Silicon Valley and upload the kill code there. But before all that, Katie wants to shoot a dramatic scene and this time, Rick is with her. They slowly drive to Silicon Valley and reach the headquarters. The plan is to disguise themselves as robots and reach the PAL to upload the kill code. The Mitchells march inside in the robots' costumes. One single mistake and the evil robots will destroy them in seconds. PAL has specially designed these robots to kill the Mitchells. She has collected all the videos of Mitchells and played them on the big screens. It also includes the time when Katie told Aaron that she never meant to admire her dad and just wanted back her future. This breaks Rick's heart and he loses control of the capsule he was driving. The robots surround them and capture Rick and Linda while Katie and Aaron run away. 
You hide behind the trees and watch the videos they filmed so far. It also includes old videos from when Katie was just born. Rick was also an artist who wanted to live in the woods, but he gave up his dream to give a better life to his kids. And here, the kids want to leave their parents to fulfill their own dreams. Meanwhile, Rick is stuck in the pod beside Mark, who's watching Katie's videos. Rick never knew her daughter was so talented. The lack of communication never lets parents realize the true qualities of the kids. But Rick doesn't have to be sad anymore. Katie has learned her lesson too, and she's on her way to saving the world. She uses Mochi's weird face to confuse the robots and keeps heading forward. The robots block her way with cars, but Katie clearly remembers what his father taught her. Rick feels so proud of her. Seeing Katie gives Rick an idea. He plans to play Mochi's videos on the headquarters screens. Luckily, he always has a screwdriver in his pocket. Rick opens the control box and deactivates it with the help of Mark. Linda has done that too. They both head towards the control room, but Linda gets caught by the robots. All the responsibility is on Rick's shoulders. He needs to play a video on YouTube. Sounds simple, but it's challenging for a person who has never used a phone. Rick keeps messing up and doesn't know what he's even doing. Meanwhile, Aaron is captured by the robots. Just like any other mother, Linda can't see her kids getting harmed. She gets into fighting mode and destroys all the robots. Katie's trapped as well and taken to meet Pal. The AI wonders why Katie is trying so hard. Actually, this selfish girl has finally realized the importance of a family. No matter how imperfect they are, they are always trying their best. The Pal doesn't seem impressed and throws down Katie. Meanwhile, Rick is caught by robots too, but Eric and Deborah Bot are there. They remember being accepted by the Mitchells family. They help play the video and save Katie as well. Rick and Katie sing their favorite song together and destroy the remaining robots. Linda also joins the battle. After a heated fight, Katie reaches Pal and throws it down in the pool. She misses, but Mochi doesn't, and he throws Pal into the water glass. The whole world is saved thanks to the Mitchells. The best thing is that the bond between Katie and Rick has bloomed beautifully. The Mitchells drop Katie at her university with a warm hug. A few weeks pass by peacefully. Katie is enjoying college, but she makes sure to spare some time to talk to her family. The government has called the Mitchells for an honor ceremony, but who wants to take a flight? Nah, let's get there on a family road trip. Technology is no doubt useful, but don't let it affect your relationship with your loved ones, because when danger arrives, only your family will be there for you.